I'll be presenting on Merche Iliade. Um, Iliade was born on March 9th of 1907 in Bucharest, Romania. Um, he had a very long academic career. He lived in India for a time um, and, and was at the University of Calcutta. He practiced yoga there. Um, in 33, he went to the University of Bucharest and um, joined the faculty there. Um, he spent some time in London and Lisbon during 1940 and went on in 1945 um, to Paris and worked at the university there as a visiting professor. In 1957, he came to Chicago and joined the faculty at the University of Chicago. Um, as you can imagine, he knew a lot of different languages. Uh, he spoke five, um, and throughout his lifetime and the different places he went, he used those. Um, in, and then on April 22nd of 1986, he died in Chicago. Um, a little bit more about his background, uh, I did find that he had an anti-Semitic history before, during, and after World War One and Two. Um, he had a far-right political viewpoint, and, um, his study was in comparative, he studied history, um, with regard to religion and, um, comparative religion, not theology. Um, and he was known as a phenomenological theorist. Um, some of his works include the comparative history of yoga techniques, Bengal Nights, the sacred and the profane, uh, the nature of religion, um, a history of religious ideas, volumes one, two, and three, um, which respectively covered uh, from the Stone Age to the Illusion, Illusion, Eleusinian <laughs> Mysteries, um, from Gautama Buddha to the Triumph of Christianity, and from Muhammad to the Age of the Reforms. And then these are only a couple examples of his work. His um, bibliography is very long. He had a very long academic career and is a successful, pub successfully published author in many respects. Um, a couple of influential intellectuals. Um, for um, Iliad um, are Rudolf Otto, who he um, kind of looked at when he was coming up with his theories and work, and then, um, I'm going to butcher this name, Nai Ionescu, um, who was a Romanian philosopher and professor in Bucharest, um, and Iliad, a, um, Iliad actually... Um, became his assistant at the University of Bucharest when he went back to join the faculty there. Um, and Iliad studied philosophy as a student and made his career as a phenomenologist, like we talked about earlier. Um, for the key terms that you need to know when you're looking at Iliad's theory, um, he defined religion as the worship of the sacred, the sacred being the opposite of profane, um, set apart from the ordinary, existing beyond time and space, but also being manifested in time and space. And um, Nye, in Nye it says that sacred is defined as being experienced by humans through particular manifestations. Um, the profane, in contrast, is defined as the irreverence or contempt for religious things outside of the temple. Um, so it's basically, uh, no, just the opposite, like it's ordinary. Um, so, uh, continuing on with the definitions, he often uses the word hierophany, hieroph Hierophany, hierophany, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hierophany, I think that's the closest one. 
um, which he defines as the breakthrough of the sacred to human experience. So it's basically like the manifestations of the sacred in the human world. Um, he also talks about time and space a lot um, and defines space, sacred space, as um, where something special happened. Um, so like it's a, like a physical place where something special happened. So temples were built there. Um, rituals can also create sacred space. It's basically a memorialization of a place. So, like, he talked about, it's kind of like, I'm trying to find the best way to explain it. It's sacred space can be different for different people. Um, like, uh, one example would be like, if I were to go to, this is a really low key example. If I were to go to my grandma's house and look at my grandma's house, I would be, it would be special and sacred to me because of all the memories that I have there and the experiences and feelings that I had in their house. If somebody else who doesn't know me, doesn't know my family or whatever, was to drive past my grandma's house, it would just be another house. It's not special or sacred to them. It's just another thing on the street. Similarly, sacred time is um, the, it's like a sacred event or um, something that, it's like a specific time that is sacred or special um, and there like are events or festivities or holidays that memorialize that specific event in time that was sacred, um, as it says there. Uh, another important way to uh, thing to look at is the definition for myth and rituals. Um, with regard to Iliad, uh, myths and rituals kind of mirror each other and are intertwined. Um, myths are symbolic, sacred narratives of what took place um, in primordial times. And then rituals are reenactments of those myths. So it's kind of like you can't have one without, you can't have rituals without myths and that type of thing. Um, and in Iliad's conclusions, um, and like why he's influential, he became a very influential, um, person with the study of religion. His ideas, um, of comparative religion have been used in the basis of religious religion religious studies as a um, field of study. Um, and his conclusion about religion comes from the irreducible experiences of the sacred, which seek to find expression in myths and rituals. Um, there's a little quote here. The great cosmic illusion of hierophany um, is a hierophany. One is devoured by time, not because one lives in time, but because one believes in its reality and therefore forgets or demises eternity. Um, which is, uh, I don't know how to describe that better. Um, but yeah. Um, so like with his theory, I'm just going to jump back here. Um, he really focused on um, the worship of uh, what he called the sacred, which is like um, if people like go to a place, it's based on like their feelings and stuff and like the psychological things that happen um, to where um, like where they go mentally. Um, he also talked about homo relig religious, <laughs> reli I can't speak today, religiosus, um, and homo a religiosus, and, uh, those are, like, people that, um, are, like, solely 
religious, like everything about them is about their religion. And um, then there are the people that are like uh, outside of that, like they're opposites. So um, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. I probably could have explained it better. Um, but yeah, so he um, concluded about religion coming from irreducible experiences, and I'll describe what reduction, redu redu irreducible and reductionist are in a little bit. Um, religion comes from the irreducible experiences of the sacred, which seek to find expression in myths and rituals. I'm sorry for the gibberish that's coming out of my mouth right now. Okay. Um, a couple of critiques of Iliad's work. His theory is, um, one thing that I was, when I was looking at all of the research and stuff, one thing that I kind of found is that his theory is based on patterns that don't necessarily exist. And he leaves out um, things that don't apply. So like if it doesn't prove what he's going for, he leaves it out and doesn't include it in his, um, I guess, proof. Um, so like if it goes against what he's trying to prove, then he doesn't include it uh, because it'll go against his point. Um, and there, another critique that was made by Sam Gill was that his understanding of the sacred is based as much on wishful thinking as it is on serious analysis. Um, so it's kind of like, he's kind of saying that it's like, you have to take it with a grain of salt, basically, because it's kind of coming from his head as much as it's coming from physical evidence. Um, which there's not a lot of physical evidence because a lot of it is just focusing on manifestations and psychology. Um, well, not psychology, but like psychological experiences of the people that are having these feelings of their sacred spaces and, um, times. Um, and then another critique that I found in Nye was that he rejects reductionism, which is defined as the practice of analyzing and describing a complex phenomenon in terms of phenomena that are held to represent a simpler or more fundamental level, especially when this is said to provide a sufficient explanation. Um, so it's like, if I can kind of narrow that down, it's like analyzing more complex things um, using simpler terms. And so he kind of, it's like he's saying that it's too complex to use simple terms. So like when I was reading his stuff, I had to read it multiple times because I was having trouble um, understanding. But that might just be me. I don't know. Give it a go. <laughs> um, but yeah. So that's basically my presentation, and I hope you have a great day. There's my bibliography. All right, bye-bye.